watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Oh my Lord, make me brave. brave. And make my past easy for me. Easy for me. A faith step onto the cloud of Islam. And you will discover the light of Iman. Proclaim this message entrusted to you. And the cloud of Islam will carry you. The hundred. <laughs> the greatest hundred in history. The author, Michael H. Hart, this American goes out of his way to search in history for the hundred most influential men from Adam alayhi salam up to current times. Number one on his list, you can guess. guess, guess, guess. guess. Number one, Muhammad. Muhammad. And always will be the last and final Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome one and all of you here tonight in retreat to a lecture by Brother Ahmad Didat of Durban. Ahmad Didat is well known for this type of lectures and we are indeed fortunate to have the opportunity during these two weeks, this week and next, to have him with us so soon after a visit he paid on a lecturing tour to the Arab countries. Our lecture tonight is on Muhammad, peace be upon him, the greatest. After the lecture tonight, you are free, come up to the microphone and put questions to the speaker. After the lecture, I will again give you an indication and an idea as to how we would like you to conduct the question time. I give to you now, Brother Ahmad Didat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أرسلناك إلا كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم Mr. Chairman Brothers and Sisters I have read to you a verse from Surah Saba, verse number 28. And as I had explained to you previously, how to find this chapter and this verse from the Holy Quran that is available to you from here, as our chairman had announced again and again, seven rands fifty each or two for ten rands. It's a bargain of a lifetime, I assure you. 2,000 pages for five rands each if you buy two. But now, at the end of this volume is a very comprehensive index. And if you open that index under S, you'll find Saba, it will be in italics. Every surah, name of the surah, under whatever the name, under that letter, alphabet, you'll find it in italics is the name of the surah. And it'll tell you is Surah Saba is 34. So you look for chapter 34, Surah is chapter, and look for verse 28, and you'll find this verse I have just read to you. The meaning of that is, Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةَ لِلنَّاسِ said, we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except for the whole of mankind. Kafatal linnasi, Bashirun as a giver of glad tidings, wa nazirun and as a warner, 
ولكن اكثر الناس لا يعلم but the bulk of mankind they still do not know that is the meaning of the verse i have read to you with regards to the subject muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the greatest you see it is very easy for one to elevate to praise his hero his saint his imam his prophet very easy to idolize our great men very easy and we all have a tendency to do that whether hindu muslim christian jew that whom do you esteem to be the greatest person so each will give his hero according to his knowledge and experience i had an occasion to take a portuguese couple around the mosque in durban i happened to be one of the guides to the juma masjid durban and it attracts a lot of visitors so we take them around explain to them what goes on and give them free literature but talking to this portuguese couple the portuguese gentleman somehow the subject arose and he was telling me that the greatest man that ever lived was dr salazar have you heard of him dr salazar bulk of the people they never heard the name dr salazar but you can't take exception to his claim because he only knows dr salazar can you see to him portuguese gentleman he must have done great work for his nation he is the greatest man that ever lived dr salazar so it's quite easy for one to idolize one's own hero but if the tribute the praise the testimony comes from the opposite camp that would be testimony indeed we praise our nabi akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam the christian praises jesus christ the hindu praises rama and krishna it's natural but if the enemy praises your hero then that is real praise indeed you agree coming from the enemy and in that regard a book has just been published in america the title of that book is the hundred see this book quite an expensive book the hundred alternatively described as the top hundred or the greatest hundred in history the author is a certain michael h hart described as an astronomer and a mathematician this american he goes out of his way to search in history for the hundred most influential men from adam alayhi salam from adam up to current times and he gives us a list of those hundred most influential men according to his reasoning he gives reasons behind every person that he chooses why he chose this number 1 and why he chose that number 30 and why he chose that number 100 he gives you reasons and the amazing thing about his list is this that number 1 on his list you can guess is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam number 1 muhammad an american in america writing a book which retails in america for 12 dollars and 50 cents 572 pages who will buy his book the 200 million nominal christians of america or the 6 million jews not pakistanis bangladeshis or arabs oh they'll buy one here one there but the bulk of his customers will be the americans the market is the american market christians and jews and he's telling them that muhammad the member of their opposition is the first man the greatest man most influential man in history and the shocking thing about his list is this that his own lord and savior jesus christ is number 3 his own lord and savior jesus christ is number 3 not even number 2 and he gives his reasons for that also he said you see the honor for christianity or whatever it is 
is to be divided between Paul and Christ. And he said that the real founder of Christianity is not Jesus Christ, is Saint Paul. He wrote more books. The New Testament consists of 27 books. 27 different books, out of which more than half, 14 are written by this one man, Paul, Saint Paul, the self-appointed apostle of Jesus, self-appointed. He didn't go and choose him. He chose 12. But the self-appointed apostle, as he claims, Paul, he wrote 14 out of 27 books, more than half. And everything that the Christian is preaching today is not the preachings of Jesus are not the teachings of Jesus, are the teachings of Paul. See, whenever we are have an argument with the Christian, we are asking him, do you keep the laws and the commandments? Because Jesus said so. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Do you keep the laws and the commandments? He said, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments or shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Do you keep the laws and the commandments? He says, no. So why don't you? So he says, no, the law is nailed to the cross. He said, we are now living under grace. I said, where did you get that? So he says, Corinthians, Philippians, Galatians. So what's all that? Who's that? He says, this is Paul, Paul, Paul. So what did your master say? No, they don't talk about the master, Jesus. But they don't talk about him. Paul, Paul, Paul. If they contradict you in anything, it's Paul. The real founder of Christianity is St. Paul. Peace and blessings be on Mustafa. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Dr. Lawrence Brown. They all believe in one God and the prophets of God. Then where is the difference? Which is the religion of truth? Which is the right path? Which is the true revelation? Travel the chain of revelation with me and let's find the true religion of God. Join Dr. Lawrence Brown in Interfaith Issues tonight at 7.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 8.30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Distinguished world famous orator who dedicated their lives to convey the message of peace came together at one platform, the International Islamic Conference, with one vision, with one mission peace mission. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Join the League for Peace in Peace Mission next on Peace TV. Peace and blessings be on Al Mustafa. So, this man, Michael, at heart, and he says, had it not been, he would have come number two, Jesus Christ. But since the honor is divided, he goes to number three. So I'm asking, please account for it. Why should an American in America publish a book he wants to do business? And he's provoking his customers. You see, in business, we say that the customer is always right. You must appease your customers. If you want to do business, you must please your customers. You don't argue and debate with your customers. Otherwise, they won't come back. But this man is telling his customers that they are all wrong. And he's right. Muhammad number one, Jesus Christ number three. Now, if a Christian confirms what Allah Baritala has already told us in the Holy Quran, he says, Wa inna ka la ala khulukin azim. So most certainly thou o Muhammad tendest on the highest pinnacle of behavior. It makes us happy that a Christian in America he goes to confirm what the Quran stated 1400 years ago. But the problem is, I say, account for it. We are asking the unbeliever, account for this, 
why should he go out of his way and provoke his customers? So some cynic, cynic, you know, jokey fellows, sarcasm. They say maybe some Arab might have bribed this fellow. You know, the Arabs are very rich. They have just run into money, petrodollars, you know, petrodollars. It's quite easy for an Arab, you know, one of our brethren, our brethren, he's married to a woman from Johannesburg, a white woman from Johannesburg. And she boasts about her illegitimate daughter, that woman, the wife of Adanan Khushabji. So our brother Adanan, he was spending $30,000 an hour for his wife to see color TV on her yacht in the Mediterranean. She could have seen black and white, but it wasn't good enough for her. She must see color TV. But with who? With her boyfriend, Rudolf Churchill. And our brother is paying for that. Our brother is paying $30,000 an hour to beam by satellite, especially for his wife to enjoy with her boyfriend in the yacht. Another of our brethren, he goes to the Australian waters to do fishing. Blue marlin, you know, is that game fish. You might have seen it on TV. When you hook that, it flies out of the water like a bird. And it, you know, it's a fighting fish. So he went to catch blue marlin in the Australian waters. He didn't catch anything, buffalo. But the people who helped him to bait the hook, he gave them $2,000 each. Tip, $2,000. Look, if our brothers can do that, why can't they give 10000 to Michael H. Hart? He said, look, man, you're writing a book. What about putting in a few good words for my Muhammad? I say it's possible, but it's not probable. It wouldn't enter the minds of our brethren to do such things. Then in the Time magazine, July 15, 1974, there were a series of essays under the heading, Who Were History's Great Leaders? Who Were History's Great Leaders? The first one was about the most influential men in history. Now the question is, the great leaders in history. So different people were questioned, religious men, mathematicians, psychologists, military men. Who do you think was the greatest leader of all time? You. Who do you think was the greatest leader of all time? And each according to his knowledge and experience, like that Portuguese gentleman I referred to you, they gave the heroes. Some said Mahatma Gandhi, some said Confucius, some said Hitler. Not good or bad. We're not talking about good or bad. But from the point of view of leadership, the guy was great. 90 million Germans at his bidding, death or destiny, and he led them to destruction. 90 million, they marched into Russia. When they marched into Russia, they destroyed 20 million Russians, 2,000 kilometers non-stop. Look, as a leader, the guy was great. Good or bad, we're not talking about that. Leadership. Some say Mussolini. From the point of view of leadership, the guy was great. Each giving his hero according to his experience and background, his knowledge. Among these contributors, there is one James Gavin. He is described as a United States Lieutenant General, retired. He says, there's an American in that article, he says, among leaders who made the greatest impact through the ages, I would consider, number one, guess who? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Number one, Muhammad. And as a Christian, he says, number two, Jesus Christ. Do you blame him? But I said, account for that. Why should he put our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam number one and his own God and Savior number two? Which Arab bribed him? I don't know. Then there is another contributor to those articles by the name of Jules Masarman. He is described as a United States psychoanalyst. And you know the psychoanalyst, the job is to analyze the minds of men. And when they find a genius, they're looking for lunacy in the man. Because we are told that the difference between a genius and a lunatic is a very thin veil dividing the two. You know, just a little over, you are a lunatic. And a little this side, you are a genius. So in every genius, they look for lunacy. That is the job of the psycho psychiatrist psychoanalyst. And he is a professor of the Chicago University, professor of psychology. He says that before you confer greatness upon any leader or would-be leader, we must first find out what we are looking for in the man. You just don't say this guy or that guy or that guy. We want to know what we are looking for in the man. 
and he gives us three objective standards. Number one, he says that that person, whoever he is, number one, he must provide for the welfare of the lead. He's interested in your welfare, not in milking cows for himself, like Reverend Jim Jones. Reverend Jim Jones in Guyana. You know, he committed suicide with 910 of his followers. 910 of... 100% suicide. Not one guy was left alive. He made them to commit suicide because he was doing things wrong and he was being discovered. So he went to get rid of all evidence against him. And what better way than mass suicide? They call it the suicide cult. 100%. They wiped themselves out. But in the meantime, it was discovered that this man, Reverend Jim Jones, had sorted away in the banks of the world $15 million in his own account. So those, his followers were his milking cows. He was using them, using them. He was now being found out, discovered. Said, so no, this leader, whoever he is, number one, he must provide for the welfare of the lead. He's interested in your welfare. Number two, he must provide a social organization in which people feel relatively secure. Like our community, when you visit one another, you know, when you visit a Muslim brother, he invites you, if he's eating, so come on, sit down to eat. If nothing, he said, right, look, have some coke, have a cup of tea, have some bhajias, have some samosas, have some kusistas. Innocent, innocent enjoyment. The other community says, look, what about a drink? Brandy? What? You know, you see these advertisements. He says, down a line and feel satisfied. You seen that? Down a lion means lion beer, not that lion that in the bushes is. That's too, too dangerous. Down a lion and feel satisfied. The other guy says, big advertisements, huge placards. He said, don't be vague, say Hague. <laughs> and you know, the French, they beat the lot. The Frenchman. There was a huge hoarding advert in Durban, 30 feet by 10 feet. And there were only three words, only three words on that advert. And what an impact those three words had. You know what it was? They had the lips of a woman, well lipsticked, with a gleaming teeth. And with one grape, you only see the grape in the two fingers. And she's just about putting the grape in her mouth. That's all. But you don't see her hands, nothing. You, don't see, you only see the lips, beautiful lipstick lips, and the grape, and the gleaming teeth. And it's written, France, wine country, that's all. In other words, if you are a connoisseur, if you have that aptitude for that sort of stuff, when you go to France, what will you think of? Drink, drink, drink. Only three words, France, wine country. He says, no. This person, you see, this Islam that made it so, that we have innocent enjoyments. You don't want to go and dance with your brother's wife? Hmm? Or somebody, you want to take her to the dance? You want to do this? You want to drink? What for? No. We have innocent enjoyments. Okay? It provides a society in which people feel relatively secure. Number three, and that person must provide for unity of belief. Well, what are our little differences? We have our arguments and our debates on the size of the beard. It's, mashallah, you got a nice beard, but why don't you make it standard size, my brother? <laughs> hmm? This brother here is so old, I said, look, man, when are you going to start keeping one? And so on and so on. You see this moustache of yours? You were not supposed to shave, you were supposed to clip it. Do you know that? So we, we enjoy these luxuries. These are luxuries which we enjoy. We have our debates and our arguments, but as a people, as a whole, thousand million, we are agreed on Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. That we testify that there is but one Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, the last and final messenger of God. On that, the whole Muslim world, Alhamdulillah, we are agreed with the Sunni or Shia. We are agreed. There is but one Allah and Muhammad is his messenger and is the last and final messenger of God. Unity of belief. With these three standards, he searches history. And he analyzes Louis Pasteur, the guy who discovered the microbe. Salk, he analyzes Salk who discovered the anti-TB vaccine. And he analyzes Mahatma Gandhi and Confucius and Moses and Jesus. And he comes to the conclusion 
that the greatest leader of all time was who? Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This Jew, a paid servant of the American government, he said the greatest leader of all time was Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And to a lesser degree, whatever Muhammad did, he said Moses did the same. His hero comes number two. We take off our hat to the man, shouldn't we? Look, what made him to say that? Unless it must be so. Or oh, tell me some Arab bribed him as well. Possible, but not probable.